filming this in my cosplay closet because my roommate might start singing downstairs randomly and my room is a mess. Also, my camera is out of battery so this is on my phone and it's awkwardly propped up on my tripod and I hope it doesn't fall. Hey everyone, uh, it's Gatsby Girl. Um, I apologize for the lack of content. Um, you all know what's going on. You know, you all know why I haven't been able to make content. Uh, being productive at a time like this really isn't as easy as news outlets would have you think, considering that we're all kind of going through a form of trauma, and asking people to be productive under trauma is not a very considerate thing to do. But I was thinking about what kind of video I could make that was kind of easy and simple and made me feel good and I remembered an old Q&A video that I did four years ago in 2016. I privated that video now just because it's cringy and I don't really want to have it up on the channel because I was such a noob back then. I thought that I knew everything about cosplay. I thought I was a pro. I thought I was like the best in the world. This was in 2016. I'd only started like two years earlier. I'd only done like six cosplays, maybe, maybe seven, I'm not sure. I've done 37 now. <laughs> I also now know that like things are totally different. I'm not a pro. I'm far from it in fact, but I have grown quite a bit. So this is the same Q&A four years later. What inspired you to get into cosplay? I've mentioned this before. Uh, I was in high school, I started to get into anime, and I wanted to go to an anime convention, and in my mind, I had the assumption that to go to an anime convention, you had to cosplay. Obviously, that's not true, but that's just what made sense in my brain. And honestly, the first con that I went to wasn't even an anime convention. It was barely a con, I swear to God, there were like maybe 30 people max. And they had really high profile guests too, I don't know how they pulled that off. It was a great first con, wouldn't trade it for anything. But yeah, I started cosplaying because I wanted to go to a convention, and now it's all that I do. If you could cosplay anything, what would it be? So the cosplays that I listed in my old video are um, Faye Valentine, Aelita, Fire Nation Katara, Keeler from Starfighter, Makoto from Free, Sayaka, Louie, Jessica Rabbit, Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven Way, my queen, Ron Weasley, Star Kid Ron, Marinette, and Haruhi Suzumiya. Uh, since then, the list is like not the same at all anymore. I have done Faye, I have done Aelita, I have done Fire Nation Katara, I have done Makoto, I have done Louie. Um, I still do really want to do Haruhi Suzumiya. I love the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Nobody has heard of it anymore. I adore that show. I want to be Haruhi so bad. I want an SOS Brigade cosplay group. I want to make a CMV. That's still on the list. And I do still want to be Ebony because I have a ridiculous amount of love for my immortal. And, and like, it would be the biggest meme ever. I do still really want to do that. Currently, my dream cosplay is Emperor Lelouch from Code Geass in his like fancy with the white and the gold and the jewels. That's currently my dream. I want Emperor Lelouch to be done for my first KatsuCon. I'm not allowed to go to KatsuCon until I get out of school. So that's around 2023 probably. And then aside from Emperor Lelouch, I kind of want to cosplay every version of Lelouch. So aside from Emperor Lelouch, uh, Julius Kingsley is up there. So is um, his outfit from the credits in Lelouch of the Resurrection. It's amazing. It's so beautiful. Lelouch wears a choker. I also would really like to make Annalise and Erica from The Princess and the Pauper for my sister and I. I still want to do Femme Rufio from Hook. Back in the day, that was my dream, and I do still want to do that. That's like less of an, oh, if you could do anything, no. Because I've, I've reached a point where I feel like I'm able to make that cosplay. I think, like, I've gone through the process of thinking about how I would make it, and I think that it's actually quite doable. Which is like a really nice feeling, because, like, 
Back when I started cosplaying, it seemed like this big, unattainable thing, but now I feel like I could really make it. Um, that'll come in a year or two, just whenever. What would you recommend to an amateur cosplayer? Um, it gets better? I know that that sounds kind of, uh, weird, but in terms of craftsmanship, you will get better. Like, if you keep doing it, if something, like, looks rough, or if a seam isn't straight, if you can see the glue on, like, a prop, that's fine you'll get better at it. And also, like, most people, like, don't even care. Like, accuracy really does not matter in cosplay at all. It matters to some people, but it's more of a personal preference. Nobody is going to, like, be on a con floor and call you out because, like, your bangs are facing the wrong way or because, like, you can see a seam that's not supposed to be there. All that matters is what you feel comfortable in. If you don't feel comfortable wearing something, do not wear it. You're under no obligation. Like, Cosplay is all about having fun and feeling good in your own skin and in the costume that you are wearing. It has nothing to do with, like, don't try to force anything that's not comfortable. Do what feels right for you. What's your favorite cosplay that you've done so far? I said Grand Terre last time, which is like, <sighs> oh my god. I was so cringy. I knew nothing about male makeup, like, I didn't even have a binder at the time, I shit you not. The way that I bound my chest for grunt hair is I, I put on a strapless bra, and I took like a sash, and I like wrapped it around my chest. Not safe. Don't do that. Get a binder. Get a nice binder from GC2B Underworks anywhere else. That's like, I, I knew so little about like cosplaying as men or like makeup in general um my favorite cosplay i've done so far right now is kind of between two so it's between gladio and noodle from gorillas i love gladio like i have a ridiculous amount of love for gladio i don't even know how i got to loving him so much i just oh i would absolutely die for him my king Just get a get an eyeful there. I love Gladio. I'm really proud of all the work that I put into that cosplay. Like there's a lot of really unique tiny little touches to it. Like I really went in hard on the game accuracy for it and I'm really really proud of it. I did like so much research, spent so much time like collecting screen caps zooming in on every single detail I could find to make that cosplay like as detailed and as accurate as I could and I've mentioned before accuracy really doesn't matter like the only person that you have to please when you're making a cosplay is you I wanted to make Gladio really accurate Gladio doesn't get a lot of recognition in the Final Fantasy 15 fandom or in the game at large and I in cosplaying him I kind of wanted to give him the attention that he never gets. I'm currently in the process of remaking Gladio and it's going so well. I've pushed myself really, really hard in making him the both times that I have and I'm really proud of all of the work that I've done on him. Noodle, I don't know what it is about Noodle. I feel amazing when I wear her. I feel like a million bucks every single time I put her on without fail. There she is, she's just in the back. Hi Noodle. I just really liked the way that the costume looks and I, like the way that my wig came out, I like the way that my face looks, and Cyborg Noodle I also really love wearing. I think that that's so far the most complicated garment that I've made, and I'm really proud of how it came out. I feel so good about myself when I wear Noodle, and I don't know what it is, but like, I'm gonna keep wearing her for like as long as I possibly can. Pretty much every version of Noodle is like on my cosplay list at some point. I love wearing her. Love it. What is your favorite thing about cosplaying? Um, in the old video I said meeting new people. That's still very much the same. I met my best friend through cosplay. Pretty much all of my friends outside of school I met through cosplay. Um, cosplay has also kind of served to widen my perspective on a lot of things. Absorbing all of the ways that people make and create and find joy in cosplay has been really inspiring. Um, I've learned a lot just from observing all of the other people in the community. 
Um, so I would say meeting new people and taking what other people have to say and what other people have to offer. What are you planning to cosplay next? Wait, this is actually really, really funny. So in the old video, I had like this whole plan. I was like, I'm gonna do Rufio, Stein, and like Faye, and that's gonna be like my big project. And I didn't do any of those that year. <laughs> um, I think that I was aiming to have those done for Anime Boston 2018. Anime Boston 2018, I did Gladio, um, Sailor Elsa, Ray, and Fire Nation Katara. So like none of, and I have done Stein and Faye. Stein is still not done because those stitches are not fun to make, but, and Faye basically needs to be remade. She was in bad shape. I had to throw her out, <laughs> but it's really funny. Like I look back and I was like, I was so certain that my plans were gonna go according to how I thought. But anyway, um, currently I can't say for certain because I always end up like changing and shifting around things. Um, what I was planning to wear to Anime Boston 2020 was uh, Yoko from Gurren Lagann, a punk, kind of punky version of Katara and Fire Nation Katara, um, a finished Stein and Nayagi from Danganronpa. Most of those cosplays have already seen the light of day, they've been debuted already. Um, Yoko had not. For the summer, my projected plans, hopefully I'm crossing my fingers that I can get my materials, are uh, Samwise Gamgee from Lord of the Rings, um, The Black Parade, the My Chemical Romance Black Parade jacket. Um, I'm doing Gerard Way's jacket. Um, I'm gonna continue my work on Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. Kefka is the biggest project that I have done so far. I'm planning to have him done by uh, winter of 2021, so this coming winter, and I'm competing with him in January, hopefully, if it's safe. I'm also, <laughs> um, I'm planning to do Rumpel Teaser from Cats. For next year as well with a friend of mine who's gonna be my Mungo Jerry. I'm also planning to do um, Cloud, Cloud Strife, but specifically his look from Advent Children. I really really like that look. Do you think you'll ever do photo shoots? Way back when in 2016, when I was a young child, um, I was like, oh yeah, I'm doing my very first photo shoot and now like, I do like nothing but photo shoots. I prefer to brand myself with professional photos. I also really like supporting cosplay photographers because they work really hard and do a lot of really, really beautiful work. Now I do photo shoots at every convention I go to. I usually do like three, like one per cosplay. I've done a photo shoot for pretty much every cosplay that I've ever done except the really, really early ones. So like, um, I didn't do one for my first Katara. I didn't do one for Misty or Ymir or like anything. I mean like, I could do one for Ymir. For some reason, people still really like my Ymir, even though it, no one cares about Attack on Titan anymore. Like, I might bring her back just because people seem to like her a lot. Do you think you'll ever get into commissions? I said before, um, this answer actually hasn't really changed that much. Um, I said before that I would get into commissions when I was fully confident in my ability as a seamstress, as a prop maker. Like, when I was totally certain that I would be able to deliver a satisfactory product. And I still stand by that. I have done, I, I did sort of, I've sort of done one. When Mui and I did Booker and Elizabeth um, at PAX, I made that cosplay for her. But the concept of commissions is not too far off. And currently, as of this video going up in uh, late April 2020, I'm making soldier belts from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, I have enough material for, I have enough black material for three. One slot is filled, so I have two slots open. Um, they're really nice. They're made out of vinyl, so like totally cruelty free, really lightweight, easy to pack, easy to wear. And I can also make, I can also make suspenders to go with them. Uh, I'll show a picture of the belts here and then um, I'll show the one picture that I have of the suspenders here so I can make like Cloud, Zack, Angeal, Sephiroth. I don't make shoulder pauldrons, but I do make the uh, apparatus that they wear in the front. So if you'd like that, you can um, email me at kawaiiicosplay at gmail.com. You can DM me on Instagram. You can DM me on Twitter. Um, and art commissions are open on and off 
generally. They'll be open for the summer, probably. And wig commissions will probably also be open for the summer. I've gotten a lot more confident in my ability to do wigs recently, so smaller commissions will be open for mutuals once the summer hits. When did you start cosplaying? Officially in 2014, started semi making my own stuff in 2016, officially diving into like uh, sewing and making my own stuff probably around spring and summer of 2017. What has been the most difficult cosplay you've done so far? Oh god, I don't remember what the answer was in the back then. It was probably like grand hair or something. Um, or maybe my Pokemon card dress, which was admittedly very hard to make. Um, currently, Shinji Ikari. Oh my god. I did Shinji's plug suit um, for AB 2019. I adore Shinji. Like, he and I are like the same person. He means the world to me. His plug suit was absolute hell. I'd never worked with EVA foam before. I was going in totally blind. I had attempted to pattern it all, but like the patterns didn't really work out, so I had to just kind of make them up on the fly. I didn't finish it in time for the con because I had to make a lot of it at school, so like the suit I wore underneath all the armor was like only fully painted on half of one side. Um, the armor was like not painted all the way. Most of it like wasn't even primed, it was just like raw EVA foam. Um, the neck was like awful to look at. It was like a gross, disgusting, boxy shape, and I didn't have any closure for it, so I taped it shut with masking tape. Um, whenever anyone took a picture of me, I had to like angle myself to the side so you wouldn't see like the unfinished raw parts. I cried several times making Shinji. I really wanted to do right by him and making that plug suit. And I felt like by not doing it right, I was somehow disappointing him. And then um, a few months later, I kind of took a step back and realized, like, I'm not doing wrong by Shinji. He's a fictional character who I see a lot of myself in. He's not going to be offended. I worked really hard, and I did something outside of my comfort zone, and I'm proud for doing that. And I am planning to remake Shinji. Like, really, pretty much from the ground up. Uh, after looking at it, a lot of it's not salvageable. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but it will, because I love Shinji, and I love Evangelion with all my heart, and I want to give it another shot. I think I can do it better. How do you decide what to cosplay as? Um, again, the answer, the answer here is pretty much the same as it was four years ago. Some of it does have to do with what I look like. I pr try not to pick characters with light hair. Not because, you know, I wear a wig, but my brows are very, very dark. Um, like to the point where um, if you see me in Noodle or if you see me in Faye or Yoko, I put acrylic paint on my brows. That's how I get the color to be as bright as it is, just because the makeup just doesn't work. <laughs> how easy is it going to be? Um, I do pick a lot of my cosplays based on like, will this be difficult for me to make? Like, um, when I decided to do Yoko, uh, I was like, I don't know if this is a good idea, but then I took a look, at, but I love Yoko, and then I took a look at her, and I was like, it really won't be that difficult to make. It's just small pieces. Because, um, like, I've done a lot more sewing with my cosplay, but I'm still really lazy. If I don't have to make something, then I won't. I will go to a thrift store, and I will alter it. And if I do choose to make all of it, then it's because I have, like, a connection to the character or I want to push myself in some way. Like, will it be easy for me to make? Will I enjoy making it? And if it won't be easy for me to make, will I learn something from it? So like picking Shinji, I picked Shinji because A, like for all of those reasons, I look enough like him, I strongly connect to his character, he wouldn't be easy for me to make, but I would learn something from it. I would learn, so in that case it was how to work with EBA foam and also how to like kind of be content with failure or how to look back and acknowledge like I didn't do what I wanted and that's okay and I will get better and then um that's all of the questions <laughs> looking back 
again, it's so embarrassing how much of an expert I thought I was. I was so young. I'd done like no cosplays. I like barely made anything. I thought I was a pro. I thought I, I thought I knew everything about the community. I didn't even really have any cosplay friends at that point. And you know, in four years, I'm really proud of how far I've come. I think that like, I've grown a lot as a seamstress to the point that I now study costume design in school. Uh, I care a lot more about cosplay. It takes up a lot more of my life in a very good way. I've learned more about crafting and being creative and like wig styling and makeup and like cosplay has really helped me be comfortable in my own skin and it's helped a lot of people because when you cosplay you don't have to worry about how people see you no, because when you cosplay you're still you but being dressed as somebody else kind of gives you a freedom to act the way that you want to in a way that walking around in your own skin doesn't quite if that makes any sense um and, you know, I have a long way to go, and I'm really excited for, like, what's in store. You know, I thought that I knew everything back then, and now I'm kind of figuring out that I don't know a whole lot. But I'm happy with what I do know, and I'm excited to learn more. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, thank you for... Thank you to returning viewers for sticking with me. I do apologize for the lack of content, um, and I do promise that once it's safer to go out and see friends. I will try to crank out cosplay content more consistently. I really want to film more CMVs. I really want to film more skits. It's a matter of materials. It's a matter of circumstance. Please stay safe and please social distance. It's the best thing that we can do right now. Um, thank you again for watching. Thank you for joining me in my journey these past four years. I hope you stick around for what's to come. Um, and uh, have a good night. Thanks. My cat's trying to get in. Hi, baby. Hi. You're interrupting the video. Say hi. Oh, he's unhappy.